dance floor as you can hear what he has to say. He's with his dance floor, he thinks the world is all over. What up, Net fans? Nets boy here. Bring your latest and your shockingly not terrible Brooklyn Nets news. So let's dive right into this episode. Uh, it's been about a week and a half since my last Nets boy episode. Uh, Nets have played four games in that stretch, and they went three and one, including uh, a great uh, redemption bounce back win against the Celtics in in, in Brooklyn. Uh, just a great game overall. The Nets came out and they matched the intensity and energy of the Celtics and pulled off a great win. Um, and, uh, you know, honestly, the Nets really should have been 4-0 and the last four games because that loss to the Heat, I mean, the Nets were just the better team for 45 minutes of that game. It was just the last three minutes. They just fell apart. It was like a old earlier in the year type of game because right? that happened a lot earlier in the year with the Nets in which they would just fall apart at the end of the game. And I don't know, like, they kind of resorted back to their crappy play that game, but they really should have won that game too, but they didn't. But they still, though, beat the Hawks in Atlanta, and then they just recently beat the Hornets in Charlotte. So a 3-1 and one stretch over the last four games, you absolutely take that if you're the Nets. And now you look at the standings, the Nets are 12-10. and 10. They're two games over 500, which makes this year Nets fan taking the over, finally feeling a little bit better about this Brooklyn Nets team. Uh, but still, they still have a lot more of, of, of growth and development and and. and Still need to prove a lot more to me that this is actually going to be a team that's going to get over 44 wins, 44 and a half wins, and get to that 45 win mark and make this Nets fan just a little bit uh, more financially secure in his life. Um, but anyway, besides all that, so overall, there's not a lot to be upset about with the Nets. Like, they have looked significantly better. Dinwiddie's playing like an all-star, despite Nets boys saying that he will never be an all-star. Uh, Jared Allen has been dominant on the boards and just becoming the the big man we always hoped he would become, and he's looking fantastic. Uh, DeAndre Jordan has played very well in the second unit. Garrett Temple has been one of the most impressive players on this team, despite, you know, me poo-pooing him. Uh, Torian Prince is playing at an all-time high. Joe Harris has come to, come alive. And David Nwaba, of all people, has played really well. I mean, there's just very little to be very frustrated or upset about with this Nets team. And it's just... It's good. It's, it's, it's good to feel this way as a Nets fan, finally. Um, but um, the biggest thing now that we need to kind of look at, though, now is kind of the next couple games. Now, before we talk about the next couple games moving forward and a tough stretch for the Nets because they've got some really tough games coming up, um, we need to address two things. The first thing I want to address, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on it, is any type of idea that the Nets are better without Kyrie Irving. Um, first, before we go, before we get into that, so before we get into the before of what I'm going to talk about later on, anybody follow that? Anyway, I just want to say that, like, you know, I start the whole hashtag I'm with Kyrie thing, trying to support him, and then he posts that unbelievably confusing, lengthy Instagram post to respond to the Celtics and... I'm just, like, reading that and hearing it. I'm like, bro, you're killing me, man. I'm trying to defend you. But all you're doing is literally, like, just just asking for more attention and asking for more negativity. Like, I get what he was trying to say because it was very worded very confusingly and very hard. Basically, all he's trying to say is, hey, I'm a person. There's more to my life than just basketball there's more to my life than putting a ball through the hoop and you all should understand that fans need to understand that there's more than that but at the end of the day I mean Kyrie man I'm trying to I'm on your side I always will be on your side as I talked about in my last episode but don't make it hard for me man you're just gaining the negative attention you just shouldn't have said anything you just should have just ignored it all right those fans are stupid okay for 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 treating you the way they're treating you and being so focused on on you, despite the fact that the Celtics are one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference, just shows you how stupid that the Celtics fans are being. So just take the higher road. And I'm just like, oh, man. But obviously, you know, he obviously felt the need he had to express himself, which is fine. Let him express himself. That's what he was trying to do. He was defending himself. If that's what he wants to do, that's fine. I don't necessarily agree with it. 
but I don't think it was that wrong. I just wish it maybe articulated it a little bit better, but I think he was very emotional and passionate, and sometimes things don't come out very coherent when you are very emotional and passionate. Probably like a lot of things I say in these Nets Boy videos that I don't even realize until after I publish them and I watch my episodes later on whenever I'm extremely bored, because um, I do do that, um, because... As I've mentioned in other episodes, I'm very egotistical and narcissistic. And, um, yeah, so I like to watch these Nets boys because <laughs> I'm amazing. Anyway, um, and then I, yeah, anyway, I catch mistakes that I say all the time when using words improperly and this and that. But anyway, so Kyrie, just relax, okay? And I believe your shoulder injury is, is, is a lot worse than it, it seems to be, which is, it definitely does because he's now missed, I think, 11 games are 12 games now, I think, and it's just kind of like, okay, when are you coming back, you know, they say he's getting there, but he's still not back yet, but either way, the Nets need him, which then takes me to the next point that I was talking about before, the whole notion that the Nets are better without Kyrie Irving, that's stupid, everyone who's saying that is stupid, it is not true, they play a little bit differently, yes, there's more ball movement, there's more players getting involved, but that's because they have to, because there's not enough offensive firepower on this team for the Nets to just rely on one or two guys. They need the whole team to score as a whole. So when Kyrie comes back, I think it's going to help this team out a lot. Because if there's any major weakness to this Nets team right now, it's that second unit. And I know that those guys have played pretty well of late. But anytime Theo Pinson, um, you know, uh, David Nwaba, um, Amon Shumpert, uh, DeAndre Jordan and Zana Musa come in, I get so nervous because I'm like, oh, God, here comes the run for the other team because those guys are just a bunch of inconsistent players. Like, every single one of them are extremely inconsistent. Um, so I kind of want Kyrie to come back soon, and so then you can take Dinwiddie, put him back in the second unit, and he can run the second unit and create a little bit more, you know, con continuity and fluidity. Trying to use words to help him use them correctly to the to the offense and balance out the attack and strengthen that bench. So the Nets are not better off without Kyrie. Yes, they played well in his absence, but that does not mean that they're better without him. And when he comes back, I'm assuming and I'm gonna say this: I believe the Nets will continue to play at the same level, if not even more, once he comes back, especially if he's fully healthy. So enough with this notion about the Nets being better without Kyrie. It's it's stupid. Um, that being said, I still don't know when he's going to come back. You know, the rumor is it was just supposed to be a couple games. Now it's going on 12. Now it's saying it could be another week or two. Nobody knows when he's coming back. Whatever. Whenever he comes back, let's just hope he's 100% of the Nets take their game to the next level. But now it's time to go to the next point that I was going to try to talk about. He's not the only player that's going to be returning to this Nets roster soon or joining this Nets roster soon. We keep on forgetting about him, but Wilson Chandler is only has three more games left of his suspension before he's eligible to return to the Brooklyn Nets. And that's going to be a huge pickup for the Nets. Wilson Chandler was signed over the offseason to be a major contributing factor to this rotation. And I, obviously he's serving the 25-game suspension for the PEDs, but that's coming to an end. But there's one major problem. Somebody needs to be either released or... Or traded for him to be on the roster because the Nets don't have the roster space for him they were given an extra free roster spot for the 25 games to uh, accommodate for his absence since he was you know um, um, uh, suspended and that's when they signed him on Shumpert but now that he's coming back they don't have any free roster spaces so they're going to have to make room for that um, Look, I'm not sure what they're going to do. I'm not sure who they're going to try to release or get rid of because they can't get rid of any of the two-way contract players. They can't get rid of, rid of Henry Ellerson or uh, uh, Cabernet, Ca Cabaron. What, what's that guy's name? Timothy Lawaba Cabaron. And like I said, I call him Cabernet because that's easy to remember. Two-way guys don't count towards the main roster. Right? You get two current contracts, but they don't count towards your... 15 roster spots, you know, they can just go back and forth. So they can't get rid of one of those two guys. So they have to get rid of someone who has a, a guaranteed contract. And who is that going to be? Now, 
Like, originally, if this was the beginning of the year, I'd say make it David Nwaba. But he's played fantastic lately. And he really deserves to be on the team. And then, okay, let's make a kiss for him on Shumpert. He was the last guy who was signed, right? But he's played pretty well, too. I mean, he hasn't been disappointed, and he's playing great defensively, especially in that shot of the game. Like, how many steals did he have? Like, so you don't want to get him on Shumpert. So if it's not going to be David Nwaba, not going to be Mont Shumpert. Theo Pinson? I don't know. He's the third string point guard. He's definitely played probably the worst out of all the Nets that have been playing regularly, but he is a point guard. And, you know, with Kyrie still being out and possibly getting hurt again, being a little injury prone, it's nice to have him as an emergency third string point guard. So you really going to get rid of him? Are you getting rid of Zana Musa, who has been very inconsistent? Maybe, but he's still very young and has a lot of upside. Do you get rid of Rodion Kourouks, who's completely fallen out of the rotation? Maybe, but just like Musa, he's got a lot of potential too. And and remember, he was a key staple to the Nets team last year, the success, success to the Nets in the past. And just because he's in a rough stretch, do we, should the Nets give up on him? So there's a lot of questions that the Nets need to figure out and that Sean Marks need to say, Needs to talk to Kenny Atkins and be like, who are we going to make room for? Maybe you just, maybe you cut Wilson Chandler. I wouldn't do that because I think that he upgrades the Nets significantly, but he hasn't been there, right? He, so why even bring him back? I don't know. Um, one thing that is interesting, though, I haven't read anything on it, but I'm just trying to use my knowledge about the uh, ba- about basketball. There is such a thing as a, as a hardship um a hardship, uh, a roster spot, which uh, you can do if you have multiple injuries to your team and players that uh, can't perform. And with the Nets having, you know, Karis LeVert out, um, you know, obviously Kevin Durant out for the rest of the year, uh, Kyrie Irving being out, perhaps they might be able to get one of those exceptions. I don't know. I don't know the rules to that. So if anyone else knows that, they can comment below and say, how does it work? All I know is there has to be a significant number of injuries to the roster. And then the, then the, the NBA says, okay, for a short time, we'll extend your roster spaces to another, um, you know, one more spot so you can weather the storm of the injuries. So I don't know if they're going to try to do that. Uh, you know, uh, and then and then that's the case. Then there'll be room for uh, Wilson Chandler to be on the roster for the time being. But I don't know. Overall, though, in the bigger picture of things, someone will have to go. And right now, if I had to make the decision, and I'm looking at the Nets roster, it'd have to be Amon Shumpert. It'd have to be. And, and the only reason why I say that is because David Nwaba's played too well. And Amon Shumpert is the newest guy, and he was never, like, and let's be honest, when, when Wilson Chandler comes into the rotation and Kyrie Irving come back and, and Karis LeVert comes back, Shumpert and Nuwaba are both not going to be in the rotation. When, that, when this team's fully healthy, those two guys are not going to be in the rotation. So to me, it's between those two guys. But I feel like Nuwaba's just playing a little bit better than Shumpert overall, and, and I just, it's tough. And I'm not, but that's what I would do. So I would let Shumpert go um, and keep Nawaba and add Wilson Chandler. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't be upset if they let Nawaba go. I wouldn't be upset if they let Pinson go. I, I don't know. This is a very interesting thing to do. And it's something that I'm very intrigued and going to be look, reading and looking intensely uh, the next couple games to hear what could possibly happen. And when um, in, in four games, when he comes back, when Wilson Chandler joins the team, it's going to be very interesting to see what this net team is going to look like and also see how Kenny Atkinson is going to put him into the uh, thick of things and put him into the rotation, if at all. Maybe he won't. Maybe Kenny Atkinson will just leave him as a, on the bench for the time being uh, since why mess with a good thing right now? So we'll see. So that's something that is very interesting to look into and to talk about and discuss um, moving forward um, because – It is an issue and something the Nets are going to have to figure out coming up. Now, next couple games for this Nets team. Um, Let's take a look um, as my... As I go to my trusty computer and I go to the schedule. Um, The next game they've got is against the uh, Nuggets. And that's going to be a tough game. They, they had the Nuggets, in my opinion, they had a chance to beat the Nuggets last time they played them in Denver. 
Those are one of the games that the Nets fell apart at the end of the game with a chance to win, and they just could not execute down the stretch. So that was a, a rough game there. Um, then after that, excuse me, after the Nuggets game, they have the uh, the Hornets again, and this time in Barkley Center. Look, can the Nets beat the Hornets two times in the next four days? I hope they can. I think they can. And um, that's, that's a winnable game. And of the next couple games, that is the most winnable. And that is the one that they absolutely need to beat. Because after that, they have the Raptors in Toronto and then the 76ers at home before they go to New Orleans on the road. So you're looking at some really, really tough games now coming up. Um, the next four games, they could easily go one and three the next four games. Um, if you count the New Orleans games, two and three. Um, I would really hope that they go two and two the next four and three and two the next five, but that's going to be a really, really tough to do because the Raptors look really good this year. I know everyone thought that they were going to, including myself, that they weren't going to be very good with, with, uh, you know, um, Kawhi Leonard being gone, but, uh, they look sharp and they look like they're legit and that, and they're, it's a road game. So that's going to be extremely tough. We already know about, you know, the Nuggets being a tough game and obviously the 76ers being a tough game and you you know, the Hornets are, might be coming out aggressive since they lost two games to the Nets already. So th that's going to be a tough game. It just gets tougher and tougher. But the way the Nets are playing, I really do believe that this Nets team is more than capable of going at least, at least two and three the next five games um, and possibly go three and two. Anything worse than two and three is going to be rough. But if they can go three and two, and that puts them at, at 15 and 12. They're just going to keep going, and, and, and I'll feel really good about it. So let's see what happens, um, and let's see what, um, what they do moving forward. So, okay, let's wrap this up. This video is getting a little too long, and my phone keeps going off. I don't know if you hear it. Um, it's the dee 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 that keeps on popping out of nowhere, which is also the level up music from the uh, Pokemon games. You know, every time you level it up, dee 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 dee. So, yeah. That's what that is, if you noticed it. I don't know if you could hear it or not. You probably can. But, I gotta, anyway, it's completely irrelevant and sidetracked. Let's get this video over with. Let me know what you guys think. Who do you believe the Nets should let go or get rid of? And by the way, I hope that if they do get rid of somebody, that they trade them and try to get, like, a second-round pick or something for them because they have all played so well. I really would hate to just release them and let them walk, but... You know, who knows? But uh, let me know who you guys think that I should get rid of and what you feel about this Nets team uh, moving forward. And if you think that they can go 3-2 and two the next five games and continue to build off of what's been a very good stretch run for them. So until the next Nets Boy episode, keep your eyes open. And this is Nets Boy being relatively happy, which is just, just weird, and signing off. Well, no.